And when we're speaking about racial trauma, we realize trauma comes in different forms. We're highlighting racial trauma, but there's different forms of trauma. And so in the work that uh, we do and as psychologists, we wanna create a space of trauma-informed care. However, realizing not all of us in this space are psychologists or healers or therapists. You might be students yourselves, um, family members, parents, caregivers. And so how can any one of us create a trauma-informed space? And so these are some of the highlighted areas uh, that we like to attend to when we're creating a space so someone can truly be their authentic selves and share their story. So one of the areas is safety. When we think of safety, we think of, yes, physical safety, but also creating and cultivating a space of comfort, allowing them to feel that they can be who they are in that space, feeling seen and heard. Sometimes for me, it means walking into that space and saying, you know, what do you need from this space today? How might we pace this to be comfortable for you? For some of you that might be students, it might be just, where can I find my safety? Where are my people? Where is my safety net on my campus where I can feel that? Now, for me, I work in a counseling center, but it might not always be a counseling center. It might be somewhere else where your identities are seen and heard. Uh, choice. Um, I oftentimes have conversations with my students about choice, that they have a, a choice in terms of where they want to access support. So if I'm operating in my setting um, as a therapist, I want to know that they know their options and that they have agency. And that kind of leads to the bottom part, but just empowerment. We always want to empower our students to feel that they're seen at all times. I mean, this last year and a half has shown us a lot of things. And sometimes there's things we didn't want to see, but we needed to see. And so really having that honest humility engagement with that student is really powerful. And then the connection, creating community. And you're gonna hear us talk a lot about how do you, you connect? And so in my language, comunidad, community, how do you create that community? How do you access support? As you heard, Dr. Manessi was one of my many mentors um, that I met. And as a first gen, if anyone's first gen in the house, it's really hard to navigate a system that you don't have a recipe for. And so you're kind of thrown in. And for me, I was kind of like pulling my mom and like kind of helping me navigate a system that also she didn't understand. And so how can we be those bridges and those conduits for our students so they feel seen and they can feel that connection to someone that gets it? Um, trustworthiness, that's that piece of rapport and kind of being who you are. Um, I know I want to, I usually lead with story with a lot of my students because they want to feel connected to me because they might just see the degree. They just might see some other layers of what they think I am or who I am in my identities. But it's important for me to tell them where I come from, what that story has looked like as a first gen student, as a woman of color. What does that look like to navigate a system that doesn't always make sense for us? And so when our students are on campus and there's some protests about particular injustices, how am I partnering with them? Those are some of those areas of trauma-informed care as well. And so it also comes into that place of empowerment and allowing them to see that they have strengths, they have gifts, and that they're worthy to be on that campus to learn and stretch. Mm -hmm.